Welcome to Spirit Music Meetups. Mike Burris here. Hi. In this video, we're going to go over drum fills, how you can really hear where those notes are when you listen to the music and you're trying to write that music out, notate it. You know, you want to look at my video on how to write out rhythm from what you're hearing, how to transcribe that. So I'll, I'll put the link down in the description below. That will help you greatly. And we'll go over a little bit of that in how to apply that to a drum fill. So those drum rhythms can be for grooves or fills or whatever. Uh, so that's a generic video. You, now we're going to really qualify that. We're going to narrow it down to, to fills it itself. So one of the things I want to do that helps me, and I'll show you some notation, is to know where the grid is. This is the grid, meaning the quarter note uh, pulse of the music, the metronome beat, right, of the music. So you got to find that heartbeat. One, two, three, four. So I'm putting a bass drum on one, two, three, four. Or you can tap your foot like this. So you got to find that in the music, and you got to count one, two, three, four, because to hear where the notes come is going to depend on knowing where this grid is. I call it like grid paper or graph paper in your brain is these lines, which is the beats in the measure. One, two, three, four. And you got to count that three, four as you're listening to the music to know whether the hit falls on that one, two, three, four. So I knew that it was on counts one and three. Uh, and then if it comes right after it, I call that jerky is funky. If it comes right after it, it's like it's jerked in there. It's almost like an echo, E for echo. One, two, three, e. See, it's right after it. One, two, three, e, e, e. It's right after it. It's not a little, it's not farther away from it. One, and two, and it's right after it. So I know that's an E, right? An E, a 16th note E count. Now, if I'm counting one and two and, so I'm counting the and between the numbers. Now my grid's smaller. That's called an eighth note grid because now there's eight counts. One and, two and, three and, four and. Now that's eight, so they call them eighth notes. So now if I'm counting that, when I listen to the music and I slow my music down, I'll put a link in there for a, a nice tool that I use for that, slowing the music down. I can hear one and, two and, three and. So I knew it happened before I said one and, 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 one and. See, it came before the and, but after the number. If I slow it down, it's even more obvious. Obvious. One and, one and, one and, two and, three and, four and, one and, two and, three and, four and. So I slowed it down enough to know that it came between the one and the and. That's what you have to do, is you have to hear how the note fits in there. What if it's on the and? Well, it's going to line up with when you say and. One and two and three and four and one and. Now, if it comes after the and, but before the next number, that's the uh. It's the last thing, one e and uh. So it's late, has a late feeling. It has a laissez, I call it the laissez is bluesé. So instead of jerky is funky, it's laissez is bluesé. So it's one E and one two E and one three. So it's before the next number, but after the end. So I'm going to slow it down. One E and a two E and a one and a two and a three and a. So now I can get used to saying that a. Uh. So you get used to saying what's happening. But if I don't say it, I'm just counting in the grid. One and two and three and four and one and two and. See, I knew it came after the end, but before the next number. That's how I know it's an uh. So that's the four possibilities of one hit. Possibilities of one hit. So now what does that look like on paper? So when you actually go to notate this, you want to go look at the how to notate a rhythm video, you're going to have your grid. I sometimes just do this on a piece of scratch paper. I write out my grid, and I usually add the eighth notes. So I have a grid like this. And when I'm listening to the music, and I'm listening just to a, a small portion of it, I can loop just the fill that I'm working on. I can slow it down using that tool I told you about. I hear maybe something right there and something right there. As I'm counting, counting through, I heard something line up. One and two and three and four. And I heard something line up on those counts. But I might have heard something 
fall between a count. You see that? It fell between the three and the and. So when I was counting three and, it happened right after the three. So I knew it was a jerky, it's funky, an echo of the three. It came in there before the and. So that's how I knew that's what, that's what that was. And so the counts that my music is, is that right there. It's the E of three. So I could just write that on my music. And I know what it is. And I might actually just do something like this. Write a small two so I know it's the and of two and the E of three. So I just knew that's what I'm going to play for my fill. And then I've got to go one step further. I've got to say, once I got it down, right? Once I got it down, it's a one hit. One hit in one E and a, one E and an a. It's one hit in each of these beats. One hit in the two slot, one hit in the three slot, and one hit in the four slot. So it's just one hit. So once I've got that, I've got to figure out, well, what sounds were they on? And so now I can go back and say, oh, I heard this. And then I heard something low. And then I heard something high. So then I can go back and do something like this. S for snare drum, L for low tom, H for high tom. And that's what I might write down. That simple. Just a cheat sheet for me and when I'm doing my drum charts. Or I'm learning the song, I can just write this on a scratch piece of paper and commit it to memory. And then you can look at my music notation page on how to translate that into notes, right? And I'll give you the link for music notation so you can see that it looks something like this. All right. All right, so this is what it actually looks like in notation. There was nothing in the one slot. There was a rest on count two. See that up there, count two is a rest. And I came in on the and with an eighth note, one bar, one flag, that's got one flag, eighth note by itself, is the and of two. There it is, the and of two. And then it says the E of three. Well, 16th note rest on three. And there it is, an eighth note on E would get two 16th note counts, E and, E and, but then I got to get to E and uh, I got to fill up the rest of the hole there, E and uh is a dotted eighth note, E and a. Uh. So every time I see a three, I say three things then instead of the two things. Instead of just E and, I think E and a. Uh. So it makes it a longer note. And then there's a quarter note on four that takes up the whole slot of four. So that's how you'd write it out rhythmically. You'd write out the music that way. Makes sense, right? Then you would want to do it on drum notation. If you have paper, five lines, we know that the snare drum is the second space down and the low tom is the third space down from the top. And the high tom is on the top space. Now if you have a middle tom, that is on the line below the high tom. So you can look at drum music and you got staff of music. I'm trying to see this. Staff of music and that's what it looks like. That's what it looks like on a staff of music. But sometimes I don't have a staff of music so I just write it proportionally and I might put that S-A-L-L-H underneath it. I might just Put a snare in the middle. I know it's it's in the middle. It's a snare, and then anything higher is a high tom. Anything lower is a low tom, and it's good enough for me, right? It's good enough for me. So that's how you would write notes out, and to indicate the sounds that they're on. So I hope that helps. Look at the other videos on how to notate, and I have a whole page on music notation, so you can really dive into that. But I usually don't go to that much trouble. Like I said, I just go S H L, and just kind of boom, boom, boom. You know on a blank piece of paper. I don't like a lot of lines, just it's more distraction for me.
So that's how you would do one hit. What about two hits? So we got two hits. Now you got to start thinking, is it the number one E? So, okay, I should say there's a whole video on 16 drum fills. Go look at that. I'll put the link below. 16 drum fills. There's 16 possibilities. Actually, the first possibility is no drum fill. There's, there's number one. Then there's 15 actually of notes. And it's this rule. Something in the first position, something in the second position. And when I talk about positions, one E and a, that's the count. So you got four possible positions, one E and a. There you go, four possible positions. And I have a whole video on this, so I'll just re reference you to that. We'll go over to it real quick here. You basically have 15 possibilities of notes. And we already did the one, the two, the three, and the four. That is the one, the E, the and, and the uh. So now we're going to do combinations of two. And that looks like this. These are the positions. It's easy. I just commit this to my memory. Actually, I have it on this side of the board for all my students. You can't see it all, but they know it by heart. So this comes in handy for a lot of things. One and two, position one and two is actually one and E. Two and three is E and and. Three and four is and and a. Uh. And then we gotta go four back to one. It's four into the next count, which would be count two, right? But we'll just wrap it. So it's one and four. Right? So we got four, one, four, one. If you just keep going over and over on the same four, one. And then one and three is the one and the and. Right? So four, one, or one, four is one e and a. Uh. One and three is one e, and, one e and. So it's the one and. And the two and four positions are the e and the a. Uh. There it is. E and the a. Uh. E and the a. Uh. So these are all your twos possibilities of two hits. And we'll do that right now on the drums. Again, you're saying, well, how do you know when you hear the music that that's what you're hearing? Well, it's just like learning apple, orange, uh, banana, pear, <laughs> pomegranate. You learn these words, right? You have a picture in your mind. In this case, you have that picture, one E and a. And this is your grid. You have, if you don't have a grid in your head or your mouth is better, one E and a. One and two and so slow your music down so you can hear this grid. And I'm hearing this grid. One and one and see I heard one and I heard two hits before I got to the end. So it has to be one E and one and two, right? One and two and three and four and one and see I knew it was two hits before I got to the end. So there's the first and second position, the one and the E. What about E and? Well, it's gonna come after one, just like one E and, one E, jerky. It's gonna come in right after one, but it's gonna have the and in there. One E and, two and, three. See, three E came right after the three and. One and, two and, three and, four and. One and, two and, three and, four and. Now, if this is your grid, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. So you've trained by saying it, playing the quarter note or the quarter note, counting the eighth notes. Your brain gets really good at seeing this graph paper, right, in your head. And you know when you hear e and you hear the jerky come right in after the number, but it lines up with that eighth note. It's called the simple offbeat, the eighth note offbeat, one and two and you lines right up with and two and two and two and right? So you get just used to hearing this and it's in your head. So as soon as you hear it in the music, bam, I know what that is. That's an apple. That's an E N. Oh, it's not a pomegranate. So, you know, it's the chicken before the egg, right? Which one, which one comes first, the chicken or the egg? Well, you gotta have these in your head or you'll never hear them in the music. So I would practice one E and two and two and two and. So you have that in your head. When you hear it in the music, you go, oh, I know that's E and. The next one is the third and the fourth position. What's that? One E and a. So it's and a. Now it's on the simple offbeat and after it. 
that uh sets us up for the next, it's called a setup. And uh, and uh, and uh, to the next, and uh, to the next number, and uh, two, and uh, three, and uh, four. So it's and uh. So I call those 16th note, and uh, and uh, 16th notes, setup. It's a setup to the next metric count, the next metronome count, the next quarter note count. One and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four. See, it's leading us up, setting us up to the next number. So, got to have that in your head. <laughs> got to have that in your head. I would say it, play it until it's in your head. Play it to a metronome, speed the metronome up, and eventually you're just going to be right there where it needs to be. Then you have the fourth position going to the next count. Four, two, four, three. Well, I'm sorry, foot to the next count. So one E and a uh, is the fourth position, right? A one, a two, a three, a four, a one. Now, I think of it as like hachu, because that's the lazy A. It's late. It's the last thing there. And it's setting us up, 16th note pickup, set up to the next count. A one. So it's like hachu, hachu. It's right there. One, a two, a three, a one. Now, a one, a two, a three, a four, a one, a two, a three, a four. So it's like right at the end leading to the next number. A one, hat two, hat two, hat two, hat two, hat two, hat two, hat two. So that's how I think of it is. It's a shuffle. It's a 16th note shuffle. Or I should say it's a dotted eighth note. Don't worry about that. It's a shuffle. It's a straight shuffle. Just call it a straight shuffle. It's not a, a blue shuffle. It's not a swung shuffle. It's not a jazz shuffle. It's a straight shuffle. All right, so that's the 4-1. What about the 1-3 position? That's the 1 and the and. 1 and 2 and 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and... Right? That's the easy one. 1 and 2 and 3 and 4. So you're playing the eighth notes. The last one is the second and fourth position. That's the E's and us. Right? The 16th note E, jerky is funky, and the laze is bluesy. And I think of that as a drunk trying to get coffeeed up, trying to ca wake up on caffeine. So the uh is a kind of a drunk, lazy feel, and the E is that caffeinated coffee feel. So it's one E and a two, E and a three, E and a four, E and a one, E and a two, E. Now, unless you're counting one E and a, which is hard to do when you're counting fast, you're going to be just counting eighth notes. One and two, but you're going to hear that E come in right after the number. One and, right before the end. One and, but then there's going to be something right after the end. One and, right? Right after the end. One and, two and, three and, four and. Now that's really very funky. Very funky, very lazy. It's all over the place, right? So it's just one and, two and, and it's playing between your counts, right? So that's that's kind of a little, takes a little coordination, so be patient with yourself. So now that is all the twosies. That's how I hear. I write out my grid, and I'll do that right now, the grid, and we'll do an example. Now, one of the things I failed to mention is once you figure out the sounds, right, now you got to figure out, well, what hands are going to hit that? Now, there is an alternating rule. I have a video I'll give you on that. It's called the sticking of fills. So you want to go look at that. But essentially, this is the rule. It's called the 16th note sticking rule. Any E's and us, once you see any E's and us, if you see any E's or us in the sticking, then it's going to get a left hand. So that's the left hand sticking rule. So... If you only see an eighth note, one or an and, there is no ease in us. So then you can alternate there as well. Notice you're always trying to go with alternating. So the right's on the numbers and the and's at the left. Now you could use a right, and sometimes you may want to do that. But as soon as you have an E or an A, bam, you are in to left hands on E's and us. So
what do you have if you have a rhythm like this? One and E, three, a four. So the A is right before the four, way there. I should make it look more like this. So you can see that A uh sets up the four. That A uh of three is way at the end, lays A. And that E of two is right after it, jerk E. And then you have on the and of one is just the simple offbeat. Okay, so what do we do? Let's, let's figure it out. So, following the rules we just said, the and would be a left hand, because there's no E's and O's in the one slot. The E would be a left hand, because it's an E in the two slot. And the O would be a left hand, because E's and O's, once you have those, those are left hands. And then you have four is a number. Almost always you have right hand, okay? So you could do that. One of the things I like to do when I see onesies, one hit, there's only one hit in the one slot, one hit in the two slot. I like to turn them into flams. So I could turn them into these flams right here. And there's so much space between them, right, before you get into this a four, you could really, instead of making those left flams, you could just as easily, you have a lot of flexibility, you could turn those into right flams. Because you have plenty of time to get to the left, right, no problem. Or you could make it alternating flams, a right flam, and then a left flam. So right flam, and then left flam. So no problem, you got plenty of time. So there's some flexibility in your sticking rules. So that would be, here's one and, let's just say we go, I didn't write down what sounds are on there, we'll just go one and, two, e, three, a four. One, so you got one and, two, e, three, a four. One and, two, e, three, a four. One, so that would be just left hand. I could alternate one E, one and two E, three, a four, one and two E, three, a four, one and two E, three, a four. I could turn those into flams. One E, sorry, one and one and two E, three, a four, one and two E, three, a four, one and two E, three, a four. All right, so there's the rule when it comes to sticking is. You just got to get to one on time. So make sure that you don't have to go way over here and you have to go right, right. I like to end on the left so that the right is right on time. End on the left, the right is exactly on time. Or if I have to end on the right, I might crash with my left hand, right? If I'm going to crash over here, get back. So I don't want to go all the way from there to there. So you have to consider where you're going, right? how far you have to go, and you do these drills in your practice session, so when you're playing, you don't think of this. Your brain just takes over, and boom, you're done. So it just does it. The brain just does it, all right? So I hope you're getting some great ideas here. Now we're going to talk about threesies. Three hits. Well, we got first, second, and third positions is one E and. First, second, and third. And then we have second, third, and fourth, E and a, third, fourth, and the next beat is and a two, which is really one and a. I'll show you that. And then we got fourth, all right, I'll show you that. All right, so here is the possibilities of three hits, right? So you got first, second, third, which is one E and, second, third, and fourth, E and a, so there's a rest. Then you got first, third, and fourth, which is really third, fourth, you just keep moving this phrase over and over and over, and a two, which is really one and a two, and a three, so this is the phrase. This is called trotting horse or cantering horse. <laughs> I had a horse racer that told me it's really cantering. <laughs> and e and a, you can say locomotion. So this is commotion, commotion. 
Lo is missing. Lo is missing. Locomotion. So this is a motion or commotion, however you want to say it. This is gal. It's a long sound upping. So it's just the sound of a galloping horse. Galloping, galloping. Then you have the first, second, and fourth, which is the fourth, first, and second position. A two E, a three E, a four E. Well, that's one E, a two E, a. And I think of this a again as a pickup note into the next beat. A two, that's that shuffle sound. So here's the echo sound, right? The echo of the number. And it's got the pickup note. Ha one E, ha two E, ha three E. It's a song. She loves me, she loves me, she loves me. Da 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 is the whole thing, locomotion. So it's really three of these and then locomotion. So she loves me. So that's how I remember that beat. All right, hope you can see that. All right, so that is what those are. And then locomotion is all four, one e and a. So you hear one e and, you hear it start right on the beat. One e and, e and, e and. We got a rattle there. I <laughs> got a nice rattle there. Woohoo! I think I both fell loud. <laughs> Not loco mo. You can say loco mo, but I like trotting horse, trotting horse, trotting horse, trotting horse, trotting horse, trotting horse. See my snare drum here. Trotting horse, trotting horse, trotting horse, trotting horse, trotting horse, trotting horse. That's using the right, left, right rule. One e, left hand. One e and. So always start with the right. So that's trotting horse or cantering horse. And then the next one e is e and a. So you're gonna hear this one, one, and you're gonna come in on the left hand. One E and a two E and a three E and a. And the reason being is you wanna come in with the left hand, E and a. So you, if you had to play the number, the right hand's gonna be right on time. It's gonna be on time perfectly because you use the rules. One E and a two E and a three E and a. So if you're counting an eighth note grid, one, it's right hand, jerky. One, and, lines right up with your and, your and. One, and, two, and. But you gotta come in after the and to get that uh. One, and, two, and, three, and, a, oh, and, a, and, a, and. A. So I'm gonna just count one and two and. One, and, two, and, three, and, four, and, one, and, two. So you're really hearing e and, and also and a. Uh. One, and, a, uh, two. So once you get that sound in your head, and then the uh, E and, E and, E and, two and, three E and. So you got two sounds overlapping to create E and a. Uh, one and a, uh, and three and four and one and. Uh. So this is tricky. This is really combining two sounds, the E and and the and a. Uh. So the next one is the and a uh, two. So if you hear yourself going into the next beat, and a uh, two. And a three, and a four, and a one, starting with my right, because it's an and. And a one, and a two, that puts the left hand on the us. And a one, and a two, and a three, and a four, and a one, and a two, and a three, and a four, and a one. So this is a great way to go into the next beat. So it sounds like one, and a two, see? One, and a, and then two, and a three, and a four, and a one. So you got to line up. So then the last one is that she loves me, one E, uh. So she is the uh, uh, one E. So now it's the pickup, the setup to the number, uh, one and the echo, uh, one E. And it starts with the left hand because it's an uh, uh, one E, uh, two E, uh, three E. See how it, the, the number has to line up? Uh, one E, uh, two E, uh, three E, uh, da 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 da. And a one E, a two E, a three E, a four E, and a one E, a two E, a three. So now it really has the E a sound. One E and a two and three and four and one and. So it has the E's and us, but then it has the numbers. One, one, two. So I'm lining up the numbers with this, and then the E's and us. One, two, one and two and three and.
learning how to play on the 16th note offbeats, the E's and us. So that is a lot to get inside your head, isn't it? Lots to think about. But that's how I hear. I start out really learning the ones, hearing where the one hit falls in, the E and or uh, the E, the numbers, the E's, the ands, and the us. Get that in, right? Jerky coming right in after a number, the and, the uh setting up to the next number. If you can get that, then work on the twosies, get those sounds in your heads. The threes are overlapping, twos. They're twos that overlap to create threes. Or you can think of a two and a one put together as a three. So it's really, you got to get the ones and twos. Then you can get the threes, right? Then you can get the threes. But try to come up with something that sounds like trotting horses, trotting horse, three in a row, galloping. Right? So I, I try to come up with a sound that's the same as I'm going to play, right? A word that sounds exactly like I'm going to play. Then turn your metronome on, set it to the one, and at least this, the quarter note B. But I like to hear metronome like this, and, two, and. So I like to hear that eighth note. You can just double the metronome speed, right, and get that eighth note. And if you, you can get that. You can quadruple the metronome speed. So it's really counting one, two, three, four, but you're thinking of it as one E and a, two E and, a, all right? You can get all that. That's really fine engineering math graph paper. We used to have this very fine engineering graph paper. That's what that is. The one and two and is like standard graph paper. The one, two, three, four is so broad, it, it's not really worth trying, you know, except jerky comes right after that. And uh comes right before a one, a two, a three, an and falls right smack in the middle. One, and two, and three, and four. And they call it the upbeat because it's exactly one, and two. It's exactly opposite like a, a piston going up and down. So that's about all that's good for onesies. But really, the eighth note grid's the way to go. And if you really want to get precise in your thinking, you know, like some of these great drummers like Dave Wackel and uh, others think in these very fine graph paper. One E and a, two E and a. That's going on in their brain the whole time. So they're hearing things line up with one E and or a. Everything's lining up with one of those grids. All right. I hope that helps. Please subscribe. That way you'll know when the next video comes out. And then please like and share this to help other people out. Your comments are very valuable. So put those down below. It really helps a lot of people spread the love. Okay. And that's what we need. <laughs> we need, we need, it's a, it's a together thing. Let's do this together. God bless you. Look forward to hearing from you. All right. Bye-bye.